Welcome back folks. Today I'll be attempting the CD Day challenge in Project Zomboid for the very first time. Meet Trent. Trent slipped over in the shower this morning and smashed through the glass. He's got a bad cut, he's blind drunk, and he's getting a very bad cold. On top of all this, the house is on fire, and he's not wearing any clothes. This wound you get at the beginning of the challenge is actually a really deep injury, and you need to patch it up pretty quick or you're going to lose blood and die. Luckily, you can tear off the curtains and just stick them in your groin and everything's fine, sort of. After finally patching myself up, I managed to lead a zombie inside and kill it. I almost set myself on fire, but I managed to steal their clothes, which is perfect because I needed some shoes. Now, I'd be lying if I said this was my first attempt at this. There was a lot of unused footage in this recording, but I didn't want to bore you guys, so I'm just showing you the actual good run. I will, however, give you a little sneak peek into what happened for the other runs. I'm on fucking fire! Now that I was finally dressed, it was time to find a weapon to defend myself with. Because I was sick, I started coughing and sneezing, and this just attracted every fucking zombie in the town. My original plan was to go down southwest to the hardware store and try and pick up a weapon, but then I had a quick change of heart, decided to leg it through the bush, and hopefully not start a bushfire. Now you might be wondering why I decided to just go straight into the bush instead of searching for other items. And honestly, I think I was just at my wit's end with this amazing challenge. So I continued wandering around through the bush until I got somewhere interesting. Now due to me hosting an absolute circus behind me, I accidentally started a bushfire. Now this wasn't an intentional strategy to try and get rid of the zombies, but it kind of just happens with this challenge, so I was kind of annoyed about that. Are you enjoying the video? Do you want to see more? Like and subscribe now to get this limited edition Trent polo shirt. After evading the zombies and making my way east, I finally found the old farmhouse. There was a few zombies inside, so I had to go to the shed first to grab some equipment. Put them up, huh? Put them up! Shed was basically empty except for a wooden plank. Took that, headed inside, and went to take care of the rest. Found a can opener, so now I could eat my beans. All the fresh food in the world in this challenge has gone rotten, so finding a can opener for canned food for fresh food is good. One thing I haven't mentioned about this challenge is that the weather conditions are quite brutal. The entire time you spend outside, it is freezing cold and very windy. So it's super important to have warm clothing to help get rid of your sickness. Antibiotics, antidepressants, bandages, painkillers, sleeping tablets. Kind. Look, the person living here may have had some problems, but they gave me a massive supply of medication that was going to get me through this challenge. After fighting off the last of the evil residents, I found the one item I was praying to find. Finally, daily vitamins. This was to hopefully cure my sickness and stop me coughing as much, which will in turn stop me attracting so many undead to my voice. Yes, yes, wash yourself, very good. Spent a short while inside the house just doing some self-care, getting rid of as many negative moodles as I possibly could, had a bit of food, had a bit of water, then set out in the hopes of finding a weapon. If you're enjoying this video and want to see me take on other challenges, feel free to comment below with a challenge that I might try, and you just may see me complete it in the future. To the northeast of the farmhouse was a large barn which had a chance of spawning weapons. As I was heading through the forest, I noticed that all my negative moodles were starting to disappear and I finally got rid of my sickness which was massive. Okay, so the barn was absolutely rubbish for gear, but luckily enough, all those zombies that swarmed me had a decent amount of gear, fair few large backpacks and weapons, so I've decided to take all those and continue on my way. Ever since I did my 72 hours in a mall challenge in Project Zomboid, I find fighting hordes of zombies is much easier than I used to find it. Once that was all said and done, I decided to hunker down in the little wooden cabin that was next to the barn. The next day, I woke up, packed my things, and went out of the house. There was already dozens of zombies waiting for me outside, so I kept heading east and made my way to a main road. You're probably wondering at this point what my plan was, so let me show it to you. Well, you see, something I didn't explain in the beginning was that Trent had the burglar occupation. This meant he could steal cars easily and hotwire them. So the plan was to get to a major road, find a working car, hotwire it, drive it all the way to West Point, go through West Point up to these three buildings marked here, and hopefully just live through my days. After going for a bit of a hike, I came across a major road and decided to follow it. I was faced with an even bigger task now, as there were so many zombies crowding every single part of the road that kept following me, and I wasn't expecting this. 
It eventually got too crowded and too dangerous and they forced me off the road so I had to keep hiking to the east towards where the farms were located. I thought I had a genius plan up my sleeve with this whole car theft thing until I realized that almost all of the cars in this game mode were completely broken. However, I did stumble across this piece of the puzzle. A vehicle in near perfect condition with a brand new tire right next to it as well as a tire iron and a jack? Could it be? It was almost too good to be true. It was just perfect timing. I was so close to running out of my food. This was it. This was it. Ah, uh, the fucking battery's out of fucking charge. So we were back to bipedal transportation. I'd spent too much time mucking around trying to get the car to work. I realized I was running out of time. I decided to continue heading west and hopefully stumble upon something half decent. I did end up coming across a large barn which was storing fresh food, but due to all the food being rotten, it was almost unusable. And there were some <sighs> very sleepy zombies inside. I did grab some of the rotten food because it could give me a slight boost in my hunger, but eating it would also make me severely depressed, so that was the trade-up. Luckily I had my antidepressants so I could counter it. I did find more cars on my travels, but the same issue arose of them having no charge in any of the batteries. I think at this point as well, I decided to scrap the idea of using a car and just decided to walk the entire route because it seemed absolutely hopeless. With all the added stress of having no food and hoping that my character survives, I got into a few close calls with a few zomboids but managed to get away with my life. As night set in, I managed to get to a house safely and settle in for the night. All the houses in this area had no fresh food that I could eat, unfortunately, so we were bunkering down and praying for a better tomorrow. I got very lucky that I found that winter clothing back at the farmhouse because the next day when I woke up, it was snowing. And it was snowing a lot. At this point, I had gotten past the worst of everything. I feel like the snow was a sign of better things to come. A symbol of peace. A symbol of calm. My journey so far had taken me farther on foot than I would ever have imagined, and while I hadn't found any food in any of the buildings I was travelling to, I was surviving on the rotten food I had gotten from that barn. It wasn't too far now, I had most of the journey under my belt. A few more hours of walking and I was there. My current hunger status wasn't draining my health too much at all, so it was looking like we were going to make it safely. And there they were, the black gates of the houses we were going for. What a beautiful sight. Uh, until it wasn't. It was one last onslaught before checking the final house. This was the initiation. Trent was battered and bruised, but he had finally made it. It was time to go inside and try and relax. Inside the cozy warm house awaited him a feast of cereal, crackers and peanut butter. Finally some real food, some safe food, something to keep him going. This is an area that had unlimited amounts of water that we could safely boil and drink. Unlimited amounts of fish that we could catch in the river and eat. It was perfect. It was home. But there's been something on Trent's mind for a part of this journey. Something he didn't want to deal with until he got to the safe house. Something that may shock and appall many of you. That's right. Trent had been bitten. He couldn't bear showing you. He couldn't handle how you'd take it. He knew you'd be devastated. There was only early stages of infection, but he knew he was done for. He decided to have his last meal and last drink by the pier and let time take its course. It was over for Trent. <laughs>